1.2.5, the alkali metals. All elements in the same group have the same number of outer shell electrons. So all elements in group one have one outer shell electron which they lose to form a plus one ion. So let's look at the electronic structures. Lithium 2.1, sodium 2.8.1, potassium 2.8.8.1. All of them have one outer shell electron. Because they only need to lose one outer shell electron to form a stable ion, they react really, 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 really violently or really well. Three reactions you need to know about. First of all, they react with oxygen in an oxidation reaction. So for instance, lithium. Lithium will react with oxygen to make lithium oxide. Now, a couple of things to note about this uh, equation. One, the formula of lithium oxide is Li2O. That's because the lithium has a plus one ion and the oxide ion is minus two. So you need two lithium ions for every one oxide ion. So when it comes to balancing it, the first thing I would do is this, I would say, there's two oxygen atoms on the left hand side, but there's only one oxygen on the right hand side. I'm gonna to have to double that, otherwise I can't balance it easily. So I'm gonna put a two in front of the lithium oxide. Now I've got four atoms of lithium on the right hand side, and I've only got one on the left hand side. So what I'm gonna to have to do is put a four in front of the lithium. And if you do that, it's balanced. Four Li plus O2 goes to two Li2O. You need to know that group one alkali metals will react with um, halogens, group seven. And this is a really good reaction because the sodium atom needs to lose one electron and the chloride ion needs to gain one electron. Therefore, the formula of sodium chloride is NaCl. Now we've got two atoms of chlorine on the left hand side, but only one on the right hand side. So we're gonna to have to put a big two in front of the NaCl. Now we've got two atoms of sodium on the right hand side. So I'm gonna to need to put a two in front of sodium at the left hand side. Thirdly, you need to know that group one alkali metals react with water to make a hydroxide and they give off hydrogen gas. Now, if you have a little look at this reaction, you'll notice that each water molecule loses a hydrogen atom. So for instance, H2O goes to OH and H. But actually it says H2 at the end, so I'm gonna need two water molecules. If I've got two water molecules, I'm also gonna need two potassium atoms. So I'm gonna to have to put a two there. And if I've got two potassium atoms and two water molecules, I'm gonna make two lots or two moles of potassium hydroxide, KOH. So the balance is two K, two H2O produces two KOH and H2. Finally, you need to know the reactivity of the elements in group one increases as you go down the group. Now the way I remember this is D-I-E-S. The first reason is this, the distance from the nucleus, which is positive, to the outer shell increases as you go down the group. So there's a bigger distance. The other thing is this, there's inner electron shielding. So the I-E-S stands for inner electron shielding, which stops the outer electrons being attracted to the nucleus. What this means is that it's easier to lose an outer shell electron. Therefore, as you go down the group, group one metals get more reactive. Make sure you explain the reactivity of group one metals before you move on.